Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face, and last time... Ooh. The audio stopped for a moment there, and that was weird. Uh, last time, we got confronted by Alex Casey here, who thought that we were Mr. Scratch, understandably so. Unfortunately, things escalated to the point where he pulled a gun, and Alan suddenly had his, and it went off, and... Now Alex is dead again, and, uh, things aren't great. I did want to, uh, illustrate a thing. Apparently there was some confusion. I don't know if I didn't explain things, uh, properly. Or what, but, uh, shout out to KOR, who wants clarity on... Was Alan's voice actor dubbing over the live-action actor, then? And, uh... Well, the short answer is yes! Basically, it goes like this. The face and other physical parameters, you know, the visuals of Alan Wake, are uh, based on this man, Finnish actor Ilka Vili. <laughs> Meanwhile, the voice of Alan Wake is provided by this man, American voice actor Matthew Poretta, who uh, is seen here playing Dr. Casper Darling as a live-action role in Control. And I thought this would be a good moment to bring that up, even if it's a bit macabre, because, uh, Alex Casey here, being based on, uh, Max Payne, has the face and body and, you know, visuals of Sam Lake, creative lead of, uh, Remedy, who we have already seen in this game, playing Sam Lake, an actor, but he is voiced by James McCaffrey, who, uh, I don't... I don't actually know whether he appeared in live action or not. I think that was him playing, uh... I know he did the voice of Zachariah Trench. I think that was his face as well in Control. Uh... Yeah. Interesting combinations of people. Uh... Right. I was heading over... There. And then I was going to double back and hit the Ocean View Hotel. So let's just do that. I believe this is the first game from Remedy where you play as uh, more than one character. Although it wasn't intended to be. The, uh... I briefly brought up, uh... I can't remember the actress's name, but the same actress who played, uh... Jesse Faden in Control played Beth Wilder in, uh, in Quantum Break, and she was meant to be uh, an important enough character that originally she originally there were going to be like, three or four playable characters in Quantum Break, all with different time powers, but they quickly realized that was a bit more ambitious than they were, uh, you know, comfortable taking on. over here by the car. Oh shit, he's noticed me! Okay, he wasn't real, but still. I see the words of power are also written in the paint. Hey, fuck off. You too, buddy. I don't want to go home. Is that what he said? I hate that. Well, that does a nice chunk of healing, I think. I didn't put that one in, right? Yes. Okay. And a word of action. Uh, yeah. Darkness projectiles. That was the one. Okay! And I know I saved after I met with Tim, so I don't need to do that again. I 
I should probably have one of these with me. I'm just saying. Wait, there's more to that, uh, the cult poster. Side note, the cult is a really uncreative name to give to, uh, a horror movie about a cult. Damn it, there's a bunch of trees in the way. Sprinting is triggering these guys. I had a feeling that one wasn't real. Ah. The Cult, an unforgettable, immersive theater experience. See it live at Ocean View Hotel. Perfect. Is that a TV I can use? Yep. The story I was building was fragile, constantly under attack. There was no time to waste. The Dark Presence was only a step behind me. You're right. The Ocean View Hotel. My destination. I wonder how this is related to the Ocean View Motel. It's much bigger. You know, there was only one story and like five uh, guest rooms. Along with the six doors that were locked that seemed to represent other dimensions it could access. One of them had the uh, symbol of the spiral on it, and what do you know? That's the one Alan appeared behind in the AWE expansion. Ooh, synchronized hinges. Well, it's nice decor. Kind of stuffy, but you know. Oh, and the wallpaper's tearing at the top. Can I read this? No. Okay, the wallpaper is definitely suffering in this room. It's all peeling and hanging down. Maybe it's water damage. I hate that noise. Don't know what it means. It's it's the f what? A loop that delivered me back to the street. What did the mystery caller said? If the waves keep pushing you away, you just need to find another way in. Okay, so I walked into the hotel, I opened the front door, I came in through this door, I walked through the hallway, and the other end of the hallway was this room again, facing the other way. That's pretty d uh, well done. Three Chord Street. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I always have trouble reading backwards when it's involving, you know, the letters that have, uh, reverse counterparts. You know, B and D. Alright, that explains that. Need to find another way in? So how do I jump from there to go to this bar? I do see all the, uh, signs pointing in that direction. get to that? I ran to the logo for Planet Hollywood. Let's turn off that. The... I can't read that from here. Something club. Oh no, don't sprint! Don't sprint! The dark place. Go 
great. They saw me as I was getting caught up in the turnaround zone. That sucked. Gonna be pissed if it weren't for the fact that his car is imaginary. Hmm. Thought so. Okay, I guess I would just wander around getting lost until they did they had the thing pop up to throw me a bone, follow the signs. So let's do that. Save ourselves some time. Mirror Peak Bar. What? Hmm. There was a recurring theme in uh, Control where uh, Jesse could talk to her brother Dylan had a direct connection to the Hiss. He was the only person they possessed who did not turn into a mindless killer. Well, that's what they fucking say. And he would tell Jesse about his dreams. What's up, Casey? Dreams which were surreal and impossible, and a uh, very good chance that they were nonsense. But some of them... I guess we can store stuff in that, because this door is a jar. Running low on bullets. The puns aren't going to help that. Some of these, uh, some of these spinny chef's hat looking uh, chimney things. I think I'm hearing a distant phone ringing. light bulbs. Oops. Um. I was kind of expecting that to be the bar. I'm just... Oh. Oh! I can go under these stairs. Well, this isn't the bar, but this is uh, going to be interesting. Oh, look at that. Bullets and painkillers. You know, not like a dead rat or something. That's weird. The other one also had the third eye lying just there. I'll go up. Am I going the right fucking way? Ah! If I pull this darkness out, something will change. Just trying to get over here to get a look at... Typewriters! In all neon letters. Oh, of course, because Alan still gives a shit about typewriters. They're all prominent in his mind. I've always thought the 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 the, the, the you know the thing I can only write on this old timey uh, method of writing. I've always thought that honestly came across as kind of pretentious. People who insist on using a typewriter. 
or like the uh, the the Game of Thrones guy refuses to do any writing except on this specific computer he's had since like the 80s. Which incidentally guarantees that he does no work when he's on tour or appearing at conventions and stuff. Now I crawl under here and there's no homeless camp. But I can go in here. Ladder. Oops. Oop. I was actually expecting that to be like the typewriter club or something. You know, something they said. Okay. Oh, I see. Destroy these nodes, remove this big patch of darkness. Circle! And that's a floating object. I believe that's the handle of a uh, shopping cart. Okay. I shouldn't even remember what I was talking about. good time to find one of those uh, words of power. Oh, I remembered what I was wanted to say. Um, the wording of the song, the specific wording of the chorus of the Herald of Darkness song. You know, show me the champion of light, I'll show you the Herald of Darkness. The most obvious suggestion is that it's referring to the fact that they look exactly the same. But I can't shake this a bad feeling like they're suggesting that Scratch is just another aspect of Alan. Ah, come in here. Excuse me, uh, sleeping bag. Oh, suitcase. I don't know if I can carry all this. We got a flashbang, we got bullets, we got, uh, what is that? Oh, flare gun rounds. We got duct tape I can't pick up, go figure, and we got another first aid kit. That's a bit bulky, I can put that in my uh, shoebox. First things first, use this trauma pad. Second thing second, reload the gun. I have one flare and now it is in the gun. I don't know. You know, in in the Alan Wake 1 DLCs, there was another Alan who was just another aspect of Alan Wake. You know, we were controlling the piece of Alan Wake that believed he could survive and, uh, you know, ultimately escape. And the other Alan was the piece of Alan 
that believed deep down that he was totally fucked and that nothing would ever get better, he was going to die in the dark place. It's like a metaphor for proving which belief is stronger. Fuck! Okay. I don't mind if they throw me on the ground without damaging me, as long as there's no... What the hell? Where's that line lead? Can I even get up there from here? No. Oh! But it is on the side of a wall. Words of aid. Uh... Oh, I found one of these, didn't I? And then I died. All right, well, I'll put this one in Torchbearer, then. We were explicitly told, though, that... You know, it's like... You know, the other Alan is just another aspect of you. Oh, is Mr. Scratch also an aspect of me? No. door with police tape on it, certainly. Can, however, wait. Shoebox and put this away. Initiation 5, room 665. And three goddamn fridges, and none of which I can open. There is, however, a cooler with a, some batteries and a road flare, so that's all right. There is another explanation going through my mind, but I don't know if I should mention it yet. I'm just going to mention that in one of those... that about? Hey! There's an echo floating way over there. I don't even see the black dot, though, so I need to get closer. There's the timer. I will mention this. On one of the occasions when Jesse asked Dylan, you know, had any good dreams lately, he tells her about a dream in which he met a strange man named Mr. Door. Oh, you know the thing that Tim was talking about with, uh, alternate realities, I can't help but feel that if they're about to drop the fucking multiverse on top of a setting that can, where a reality can explicitly be edited, there is literally no limit to the potential we could be facing. Literally anything could happen. We could meet a version of Alan Waite who's dating Attila the Hun. We're talking about infinity here. Man. Maybe there really is a reality where uh, Bright Falls was saved from zombies by uh, someone in love with Alan. Oh well. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Alan Wake 2 when I climb this ladder and we find out where the fuck we're going. I assume I'm not even going anywhere at this point. <laughs> uh, till then, have yourselves a great day, and stay in the light.